Hello everybody. I know it's been a while since I've made one of these, but I wanted to jump back in and make sure that the first video I did after a long stretch was as useful as possible. So this one is going to be discussing healthy habits for your mental health. There are eight different habits that I put together and I will review them briefly right now and then I'll go into depth with which each one means. So number one is to be kind to yourself. Two is to stop doom scrolling. Three is how to name how you feel and how to allow yourself to feel it. Four is to make a constant effort to check in with your emotional and mental needs. Five is how to say no to things that you don't want to do. Six is going to be to give yourself permission to rest. Seven is to challenge yourself to write down three things you're grateful for each day. And eight will be how to embrace physical activity. So number one, be kind to yourself. Self-compassion is important for your mental health. We are prone to be our worst critics, especially when it comes to making a mistake or whenever we're dealing with a difficult emotion or difficult emotions. When you allow yourself to notice these feelings without labeling them as bad or good, you're choosing self-compassion. When you notice a surge of a difficult emotion, stop and empathize with your experience. Recognize how you're feeling and repeat these phrases to yourself or some sort of variation of it. May I be kind to myself in this moment. That opens up and breaks the automatic response of negative thinking or self-critical talk. May I accept myself exactly as I am in this moment. Notable psychiatrist Carl Rogers said that whenever you use this curious paradox to yourself, you allow yourself to be exactly who you are and therefore you leave room to allow a change to happen. The last phrase, may I give myself all the compassion I need. You yourself are deserving of compassion. Compassion is a resource of resilience and you are equally as deserving of the compassion that you're so, you are so freely able to give to others. Number two, stop doom scrolling. Doom scrolling is a modern term for the act of consciously scrolling through social media in an imbalanced way or you're consuming harmful content. Most of us do this without realizing it and we tend to do it because we think that with the more information we intake, the more control we have over that situation. When in fact, there's no way we have control over this information or the outcomes, right? So. It became a norm usually because of the fact that we have so much technology and so much accessibility with technology. Everything is in the palm of our hands usually. And it's something that can be curbed. So the ways that you can curb doom scrolling is by turning some push notifications off on certain applications. You can set aside specific times to scroll through social media. You can choose which sources and which accounts that you follow or that you like to check out wisely. Make sure you're wisely selecting, you're being selective about what you're intaking constantly. And another way is to set limits for your screen time, like only allow yourself a certain amount of time a day to go through social media. Name what you feel and allow yourself to feel it. So we are always feeling something, even while we are feeling content. When it comes to difficult emotions, we tend to not allow ourselves to fully feel that emotion in order to properly navigate it because of how heavy it can feel sometimes. So here are some ways that you can allow yourself to process an emotion. You'll firstly start off by naming the emotion you feel. Even if you're not exactly sure what it is that you're feeling, that's when technology can come in for a good thing. You can Google a set of emotions. You can also identify where you feel that emotion. So where in your body is it displayed? Is it in your chest? Is it in your stomach? And then once you do, place your hand over where you are sensing that emotion to allow yourself to really connect into that part of you. Then you take a deep breath into that area of your body, into where that emotion is being stored because emotions do get stored in our bodies. And then try to understand the emotion by digging a little deeper after that breath. So you'll really pinpoint why you're feeling that way. So let's say if the emotion you're feeling is anxious. Now you dig a little deeper. Why is it that you're feeling anxious? What triggered the anxious feeling? And if you can't really pinpoint, you can just try to retrace your steps a little bit. Like how long ago were you feeling that way? And then 
you calculate what you were doing that amount of time ago. And after you do that, try to normalize your emotion and saying, okay, this is what I'm feeling. It makes sense that I'm feeling this way. Then after that, it would be to give yourself that compassion for feeling that emotion. Like make sure you always end it off with, and it's okay to feel this way. And then after you're done with that, in order to kind of release that emotion since they do get stored in our bodies, the last part of processing emotion will be to move your body in order to release that difficult emotion or even using a grounding exercise to kind of dissipate that emotion out of your body. Four, make a conscious and consistent effort to constantly check in with yourself with your emotional and mental needs. This helps us name and address any stressors that are taking a toll on our mental health. You can ask yourself three different questions, the hows, the whats, and the do's. So for the hows, you ask yourself, how am I feeling today? Like genuinely ask yourself that. Ask yourself, how do I feel about myself right now? How can I be more gentle with myself? So those are the hows you can ask yourself. Then the whats, you can ask, what do I need in this moment? What are my basic needs right now? And you can even ask yourself, what's taking up my headspace mostly? Then the do questions would be along the lines of, do I feel safe emotionally? It can even be, do I know what my body needs right now? Do I know what my mind needs right now? Or you can ask, do I feel safe physically right now? Because when you ask yourself that as well, like your body usually is the one that expresses what you're experiencing emotionally. Number five is to say no to things that you do not want to do. We all do things that we don't want to do from time to time, and it can have any degree or any range. There are some exceptions of things that we must do and responsibilities that we must meet, but while you can't really say no to those necessarily because they are very crucial, there are other areas and other opportunities that you could say no to. If you, first of all, have a people-pleasing personality, you'll find yourself having an overwhelming time saying no because it's difficult because of the fact that you're putting yourself in another person's shoes. You're wanting to make sure that you don't let everyone down or you want to make sure you make everybody happy. But it is very crucial for our mental health to have that ability and recognize that saying no is you setting a boundary for yourself. It's you giving yourself the chance to honor your own needs and to honor how you are truly feeling at that moment. Number six, give yourself permission to rest. There are five different rests that you need to allow yourself. The first is physical. So this all contributes to your mental health. Physical rest is important in order to heal, in order to recharge, and to relieve any stress that is stored in your body or in your mind. It gives your mind one less thing to have to do. Number two, creative rest. Creative rest is when you allow yourself to get more rest in order to become more productive and creative. So for example, let's say you are a creative person. Sometimes you get like writer's block or you draw a blank whenever it comes to creating fresh ideas, right? So in this circumstance, you would allow yourself to take a break from that in order to be able to replenish your brain to be more creative and to open up to ideas without burning yourself out. Number three would be emotional rest. So this is good when we don't want to experience emotion exhaustion, which can happen when there's like a wide range of varieties of emotions happening in one given moment with you, within yourself and within a whole space. So give yourself emotional rest to just be without having to process some things if you are overly processing things or not even processing, but just storing, if that makes sense. Number four would be to have mental rest. It is critical for your mental health. So allowing yourself to not have to really worry about focusing on so many tasks at hand or thinking of a million different things at once, especially when it comes to multitasking too, like it can be pretty intense on your mind to have to do all of that. The last type of rest would be social. The fact that you may be overstimulated by being around others in excess socially can be draining. So it's important to make sure that you give yourself social rest. You find a little bit of solitude in order to recharge and in order to kind of recuperate your social battery. Number seven would be to challenge yourself to write three things that you're grateful for each day. So studies have actually shown the benefits of what it would mean to hold a gratitude journal. And it says that the more grateful that a person is, 
the more dopamine that they actually release in their brains, which is a neurotransmitter that makes you feel good that is produced inside of your brain. So think about it. It's a way to be able to hack your neurotransmitters in a way that allows you to kind of feel. It'll be like a feedback loop. It's kind of like when a person decides to notice red cars, right? It's always on their mind. And throughout their day, look at how many red cars you start seeing after that, after that thought pops up, right? So think about it with gratitude. It wouldn't be any different. The more grateful you are, the more you'll seek out reasons to be grateful because you're kind of holding yourself accountable to do three things that have made you grateful in each day. You're going to actively seek out which of those three things you should write down. Even if you barely come up with three things, it starts building up more and more and more over time that those three things are going to become so many things and you have to narrow it down to the three things. When it gets to that point, there's a way that you can really up the whole process you can do three things in the morning and three things at night those are the times that you would write so during the morning you would write three things you were grateful for the day before during the night you would write three things you were grateful for during the whole day and it's really important because life can be so overwhelming sometimes that it can cause us to forget that there's so much to be grateful for in everyday life So when you actually give yourself that time to really sit down and be appreciative and kind of slow down through everything, you allow yourself to ground yourself into a true state of peace. Number eight would be to embrace physical activity. So it can be anything from jogging to yoga to boxing to swimming to soccer to football to baseball to cheerleading to gymnastics to hiking to anything, rowing, whatever it may be. When it comes to that, it can even range from weightlifting all the way to a simple walk around the block. And it's really good because it allows you to nurture both your mental and your emotional health. And that actually allows you to not only take care of those realms, but those two feed each other into how it can in turn reduce stress. So that's how they can configure together both of those areas of your life and all through physical activity and embracing it. It also releases feel-good endorphins, which, like I mentioned in the last point, is that those feel-good endorphins get released out of that. So if physically, it's an even faster hack. It can be seen with a runner's high, for example. So if somebody's running, suddenly they get to that runner's high and they feel so good, they feel so exhilarated, right, because of those feel-good endorphins. So if it comes to any other activity too, those feel-good endorphins will be pumping through your brain in a more of a psychobiological way, and then in turn, that does have a ripple effect into your mental health. Does that make sense? You're actively producing those endorphins, and those endorphins feel how you feel, and it's, again, it all comes back to feedback loop. Everything is connected. The physical, mental, and emotional are all interchangeably connected. So I hope that that helps too. And that will conclude the different ways that you can adapt healthy habits for your mental health. I love to end videos with accessibility to mental health resources. So here are a few resources I also gathered if you need to reach out to those in order to feel your mental health. So the first would be the crisis text line. I personally volunteer as a crisis counselor on this line. So in order to contact that, you will text HOME to 741-741. Suicide prevention lifeline is 800-273-8255. The postpartum support helpline is 800-944-4773. To contact the Trevor Project, you text START to 678-678. To contact the National Helpline Network, you would contact 800-442-4673. And in order to contact the Disaster Distress Helpline, you would contact 800-985-5990. And the Trans Lifeline will be contacted through translifeline.org. I hope that this video has proven helpful to add in new habits for your mental health, or at least resources. Remember, you deserve to check in on yourself. You deserve to feel good, and you deserve to have that support or resources accessible whenever needed. I hope that this video has been helpful, and have a great mental health day. Thank you.